Hey guys, so this is going to be not planned video and the uh, thing is that Zabbix 6.0 is finally released and we need to talk about how can you actually install it. Despite the fact that I already have a video about Zabbix installation, which in fact was one of the first videos in this channel, which was released I guess three years ago and that is the problem. So that tutorial is... Uh, about how you could install the Zabbix three years ago. And since then, some of the things have changed. So the process is still straightforward. And the only thing that you need to keep in mind is just reading what you can see in the Zabbix.com and also being aware about the supported versions, both for the Linux distributions and also for the databases. First of all, what you need to do is just head to the Zabbix.com and search for the big green button which says download. So this is the main page where you will find all of the information that you will need to actually deploy your Zabbix server. And we will also be doing the same on my um, just uh, lab environment uh, Linux machine. So basically you have a couple of options how you can actually install the Zabbix. And the first most traditional one is probably the Zabbix packages. We will be talking about it. We will also be doing that from uh, from the scratch, but there are other options. As example, the Zabbix cloud images. And let's say if you're using AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, uh, DigitalOcean, any of other of these providers, you can get your Zabbix up and running in your cloud with, in no time, right? Just go to the marketplace and uh, get get the Zabbix installation and you will have it up and running and you can do all the magic. The only thing that you see the Zabbix 6.0 was released today, but the images are still mostly for the 5.0. So I guess it's not going to be a problem after like a couple of days. But as for now, for today, uh, there are no images for the Zabbix 6.0 yet. Other options is using Zabbix containers. So if you're familiar with a Docker and you have some Dockerized environment and maybe you just want to do the lab environment setup uh, with a Docker, there you go. You have a containers for everything that you might need, like the Zabbix server on a MySQL, Zabbix server on a Postgres, proxies, front end, Zabbix Java Gateway agent, again, front end with Nginx, front end with Apache, SNMP traps and the web services for the reporting. So you can find everything that you need and their official Docker files. And inside the Docker hub searching for the Zabbix, you can also find uh, documentation about the deployment, what environment variables you can find, what the parameters do you need to specify. Next one is appliance. So just for the testing setup, I would not uh, recommend to use it, let's say, for uh, production installation uh, right from the scratch. So if you just want to test Zabbix out and you're not familiar with the Docker, you don't want to spend 10 minutes uh, to install it from the packages, then you can just download an ISO image, uh, load it up to your virtual machine, and you will have Zabbix up and running. Sources, well, that is like compilation from the sources, which is probably a bit more advanced topic and uh, not for this video, definitely. Zabbix agent, not talking about a Zabbix server, so we can skip again this for our video. So in our video, we'll be doing step-by-step -step installation on the packages. And uh, for the packages, we need to choose 6.0 LTS version, and then we need to choose distribution. So these are the supported distributions for the Zabbix 6.0. And keep in mind that these requirements have changed. If you're not aware about them, you can first of all see it here, like despite the fact that you can see 6.0 Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 6. There is nothing under it. And same goes for the 7, because uh, RHEL 7, CentOS 7 are not supported by the Zabbix 6.0. I will also link a video so just add a cards uh, where I specifically talk about supported database engines and supported Linux distributions. Somewhere probably it's going to be here. So uh, we choose the version. I personally have Oracle Linux machine. So this is Oracle Linux 8. So I will click here, Oracle Linux version 8. And as for database, I will choose my SQL. You can use a Postgres. Again, there's no like uh, big advantages on in a favor of one or another. Just choose the one which you're familiar with. And then choosing the web server. Apache or Nginx. Uh, Apache may be like a little bit more straightforward. 
Nginx could require a little bit more tuning, but it could give you better performance on uh, like big loads, a lot of users uh, online and stuff like that. So first of all, we need to deal with a database. And again, I have a clean installation of the Oracle Linux 8. Well, it was it is clean now because I deleted everything from it. And first of all, before actually installing the Zabbix server or any Zabbix related packages, we need to install a database. And to install a database, we need to type yum install, I will be doing my SQL. So uh, yum install install mysql dash server and I will add minus yes to confirm it and uh, in case of the Oracle Linux 8 um, even if we without adding any official repositories of the mysql or stuff like that just type yum install mysql server you will get uh, mysql 8.0 which is supported by the Zabbix uh, 6.0 which is uh, pretty good and a stable uh, mysql engine version so Again, if you're going in a favor of the MySQL, then I do suggest using uh, 8.0. Don't go below that. Even despite the fact that you can like set up and agree in the Zabbix server config file that yes, I want to use uh, outdated database version. Don't do that. Start up with uh, MySQL 8 and uh, then build from there. Okay, so the MySQL database installed and uh, the next thing that we need to do is actually start the database. So we need to type systemctl start MySQL D. This should do the job. And as we can see, the database is started. We can type in MySQL and as you can see, we are inside a MySQL console. Uh, for the testing purposes, again, we will not specify uh, we will not set uh, the root passwords or do some security hardening. This is just a demonstration how you can get up your uh, Zabbix on your virtual machine. So the next step, we need to pick up everything that we have in place. So 6.0 LTS, Oracle Linux version 8, MySQL database, and for the for the sake of testing, let's go with Apache. Then just scroll down and you will find a list of the commands that you actually need to execute. So first of all, you need to add a repository of the Zabbix 6.0 from which you will be installing all the uh, packages. So this command, rpm uvh, uh, and we got the uh, repository of the Zabbix 6.0. The next thing is DNF clean all, uh, same, goes like yum clean all and the next one could be yum uh, make cache this is just let's say refresh all of your repositories because we just added a new repository i would not say that this is a mandatory step but uh, if you don't do that it might happen that you added your zabbix repository you type yum install zabbix server and you receive a message that package Zabbix server is not found simply because um, the RPM did not build a cache yet. So just for the sake of being sure that it works, do this uh, yum clean and yum make cache. Next step, we actually need to install all the packages. And this is again, a copy paste uh, line, you can do yum install, you can do DNF install, both of these still work. So what do we have here is Zabbix server dash MySQL. And this dash MySQL identifies that yes, we're using MySQL database, if we would install if we would install a Postgres, then it would be Zabbix server Postgres SQL. Zabbix Web MySQL is the Zabbix front-end package, again, tied to the MySQL engine. Zabbix Apache config, just a configuration of the Zabbix front-end. SQL scripts, we will need them to import a schema in our database for Zabbix to actually function. SL Linux policy for security enhanced Linux and Zabbix agent for the monitoring. So without going deeper in this just copy paste the line don't uh, copy paste the hash in front and uh, paste it in your cli uh, click enter and you could also add the uh, minus yes if you would do that you would not have to do it right now so uh, type in yes to confirm all the installation and after that we will have all the packages like the Zabbix server, Zabbix frontend, agent, all the frontend required files, database scripts in place. And we can actually begin uh, the configuration phase, which will take just a couple of minutes. Um, so there we go. Everything is completed. Again, let's go back to the Zabbix.com. So what do we need to do? Create initial database. We need to go to the MySQL. I will probably do it like this. 
just so it's easier for us to do the copy paste and make it like this. So log in to the MySQL database, MySQL minus user root minus P4 password. But in our lab environment, we don't have a password for the root user. That's why I just type in MySQL. Then we need to create database Zabbix. That's the name of the database that we will later use and specify the character set UTF-8 MB4 and collate utf8 mb4 underscore bin this is a requirement for the zabbix database don't miss these parameters don't just create database zabbix fill in as it is with the character set and collation utf mb4 so semicolon in the end click enter uh, can create database database exists yeah so i have some leftovers from my previous installation so i will call it uh, zabbix underscore sigzato just changing the name because i already have a zabbix database there we go we created it then we need to actually create a user which we will then use in our zabbix server and zabbix frontend so in this guide in a Zabbix com, there is one simple thing create user Zabbix at uh, I will also use Zabbix uh, 6.0 at localhost identified by and password Zabbix. There we go. And then later on, we will be using this Zabbix underscore 6.0 user in our Zabbix server config file and also in the front end. But if you are setting up your Zabbix for a production, not for the testing only, then it might make sense to actually create two users. One which is used for the Zabbix server and a second that is used for the front end. That way it later be easier to do the troubleshooting and understand like which queries are coming out from the server and which qu queries are coming from the front end. Next, when we have a user created, we actually need to grant a privilege. So grant all privilege on Zabbix uh, underscore 6.0 um, dot star all tables and to Zabbix uh, underscore 6.0 at localhost, which means that uh, we can use the Zabbix underscore 6.0 uh, 6 only from the local host. If you have the remote database and a Zabbix server sitting in a diff different locations, then pay attention to this parameter. Most likely you need to specify the IP address of your Zabbix server here. So click enter. Good. That's it. That's all we had to do in the database. We can quit. And then we need to actually import a schema because we created a database. We created a users, but the database right now is empty. So we can go to the user share doc Zabbix uh, SQL scripts, uh, my SQL, because we have a SQL database. And inside it, you will find server.sql uh, zip file uh, for the proxy history primary keys and a double sql so yeah just uh, zcat and server sql uh, zip file and uh, pipe it to the mysql again i will not specify the username and password because the root uh, user is without a password and the database name that i just created in the previous steps was zabbix underscore six zero click enter this command will take uh, I don't know 10 seconds 15 seconds basically it is loading all the tables and all the default uh, data from the schema file inside your Zabbix database so this might take like some seconds depending on the performance of your virtual machine or physical server there we go. So right now our Zabbix database is ready. We have users, we have packages in place. And the only the last thing that is left is to specify the required configuration parameters. So first of all, we need to change um, Zabbix server config file. So vim etc Zabbix Zabbix server dot conf. And sorry, I don't have a vim. So I will use vi. Uh, VI in the Zabbix server config file and then we need to search for just a couple of parameters that we need to change and just scrolling down from the top it's basically um, DB host 
is still localhost uh, database is located on the same machine with my Zabbix server. If your case is different and again, specify the IP address of your database here. Uh, DB name is not Zabbix. Uh, remember I created Zabbix underscore six zero and uh, DB user same. So it's not Zabbix, it's uh, Zabbix underscore six zero and a DB password is uh, Zabbix. That's what I created. So just uh, on comment uh, DB password, which is an example parameter, write a new line without a hash and specify the password. So Zabbix in my case, then just save the file. And what we can do, let's check here. So we specify the DB password, then we need to start a Zabbix server and agent processes. So just system CTL restart the Zabbix server, Zabbix agent, HTTPD and PHP FPM. So just copy paste the command. Everything goes fine. We can check the log file of the Zabbix server. Interface became available, which is good. So basically we have just one thing left. We need to go to the Zabbix front end. And to do that, we need to find the IP address of uh, the virtual machine, which we are right now running. And in my case, it is this one. So open your browser. Um, yeah, just uh, type in and slash Zabbix. This is important. So not just IP address, but slash Zabbix. Click enter and you will get to the configuration wizard where you just go next step. Uh, make sure that everything is okay here. And if you're doing this from the packages and installing everything from the scratch, this is gonna be fine. So just okay, okay, okay. Uh, next step, database type is MySQL and there are no way to choose anything else simply because remember we installed the Zabbix web dash MySQL. Uh, database host is a local host, port is default, database name is Zabbix underscore 60, storing credentials in a plain text uh, for the sake of the testing, user is Zabbix underscore 60 and the password is Zabbix. So next step, uh, Zabbix server name let's call it YouTube. And next step, next, congratulations, you have successfully installed the Zabbix frontend, click finish, the username is admin with a capital A and a password is lowercase Zabbix. So there you go, you have a Zabbix 6.0 LTS version up and running, the Zabbix server is also running, if we would go to the configuration hosts, we see that uh, the Zabbix server host is being monitored, availability is green, which means that we also can go to the monitoring latest data, and see all the data coming from this virtual machine. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that this will be helpful for many of you and welcome all the newcomers to the world of the Zabbix. If you're just starting to use uh, this monitoring software from the version 6.0, then uh, it's a pretty good time to start. And if you're looking for more information and tutorials about uh, this product, then this channel probably will be helpful for you. So don't forget to subscribe and leave some comments or questions. Thank you guys as usually goodbye and see you later.